السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله Is the illusion of shaitan the reality and power of black magic, Sihir? I don't know, black magic seems like a, an interpretation for people, what is black magic? But it is the magic that he uses, black, white, red, yellow, doesn't matter. The illusion that shaitan operates off of is the magic that he casts, so that's everywhere. When you watch TV he's casting magic, when you hear the news he's casting magic, when you look at their financial system it's casting magic, when you speak their language it's casting spells, magic. So this is the abode of shaitan, this dunya, the material world this is where shaitan established his throne and his ifrit and his kingdom. He operates by a magic, the power he has is, is, is limited but the real power is the humans that landed here. And they have the power to manifest and their brain and heart has been hijacked. And as a result of being hijacked he uses their power against them and other humans. So that in itself is a magic because he's a magician. So the real power lies with Allah and that's why we say, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله علي العظيم So that Allah's power enters the heart and breaks the illusion of that magic. That's our whole life's journey and now because of the dajjal we're in now a great act of magicianry, magicness where the magicians are all coming out and everything is a magic show for them. When they talk with their TV, with everything is some sort of a magic show happening. So the whole interpretation and the battle against this is through the certainty of the heart through the connection. When the connection is strong it looks with the vision of the heart and begins to penetrate the veil of their magic so that you can see behind the scenes. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Seen that, oh, this is like a, an illusion and delusion. And that's why then the people under the magic spell they think you're crazy. So, what are you talking about? Of course, this is real. Of course people are sick, look at all this, look at all that, what are you talking about? Go take this, go take that. And you say, no that you're under a spell and there's a different reality to it and you can take a very simple medication and that would go away. So it means many of these types of things are coming out even more so now and that's, that's important in, in the tafakkur and the people of belief is to have an immense state of belief in, in which their hearts are illuminated with lights so that with those lights they can look and to see and to see the reality and pierce the illusion, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Sayyidi, can shaitan hear what we are thinking? Yeah, of course. How could he not? 
he's the one making you to think it. So any type of being is casting their waswas, their thoughts, their words into your heart and into your mind. So no doubt they're the ones casting that, so more than knowing what you're thinking, they're giving you what you're thinking. So the concept of auzu and again making your wudu, keeping your namaz, keeping whatever Allah asked of us, keeping your energy to be strong so that to fix the heart, purify the heart and make intention based on good intentions so that Allah provides an action and an amal to complete that intention. And the one whom fortifies their heart and protects their energy then that heart becomes harder and harder to enter. But at first stage when the heart is not secure then shaitans are casting all day long into the heart. So then that thought is not from you. And that's why we said, go back and look then on your chair. Who's sitting on the chair when that happens? So the people think, oh I'm, I'm really good but then why that? So when we start to link this process together we can understand all of that thought, this thought comes, this, this desire comes. At that time I can understand, no that must be shaitan and my nafs on the chair making me think that, making me to desire that. And as a result I have to do my zikr, I have to do my connection, I have to do, do all that I've been told to do. So it means it has a very fixed program. You do the connection, you do the muraqabah, you keep yourself protected, you eat from goodness and holiness and that you build your energy and build that connection so that difficulty doesn't come. And by good character again good things come and, and difficulty goes. By bad character then something is not uh, working right. If you bother people, you talk bad, you have uh, bad thoughts, bad intentions, bad whisperings, jealousy, all these bad characteristics means shaitans are too close to you, putting all of this sort of whispering, whispering, whispering on, so they're too close to be whispering like that. So these are not good things and that's why then difficulty comes, rizq gets cut. All of these things start to happen because they're not pleasing to Allah So all the shaykh can do is keep telling you, do your practices. The shaykh is not going to make a prayer to take away what Allah sends as a test. The shaykh's not here to compete with Allah he's here to teach you what Allah wants. Allah wants you meditate, contemplate, make your character to be right. Watch what your whisperings are, watch what your, your eyes are, are whispering. When you look at something and you, you, you have a, a bad desire for it or a, a jealousy for something, these are whispers that come to the heart, clean them, make your salawat, make your praisings to so that the heart and the condition of the heart to be good. When the condition of the heart is good, the actions of the character and the, and the insan are good then inshaAllah Allah then increase the rizq and the sustenance because that's from the first of the tariqah. When Nabi Musa and Sayyidina Khidr were on the boat. So sustenance is in tariqah hands for training, it's up and down then has to be based on guidance. Not that those shaykh pray for me these difficulties are coming. He's already prayed, he's making you to do the teachings, are you following them? But he's not going to make a du'a that all of these vanish and you back, back into positions because it creates a zulamat. That the reason Allah wants the attention of the servant is to correct the characteristics. 
So it's very simple, when the character and they change what's within themselves, Allah changes the condition. Says, I don't change a condition of a people means i.e. income, job, uh, spouse, a- anything in our lives is called the condition. You don't like your job, that's a condition. You don't like your home environment, that's a condition. You don't like your work, that's a condition. You don't like your pay, that's a condition. And Allah says, I don't change a condition of a people because that's what's going to be their testing until they change themselves. That can only be changed by muraqabah. So when Allah is saying, change themselves, for those people who don't accept muraqabah, contemplation and muhasabah, so what does Allah mean by change themselves? I don't change a condition of a people until they change themselves. How could you possibly change yourself if you don't know yourself? It would require to know yourself and know what governs you. And the only way to know yourself is to sit and meditate at night, what did I do wrong, who did I talk to, how did I talk bad, did I have bad thoughts, did I have like jealous thoughts and why he has and I don't have, why they look like that and I don't have, what's like this, what's like that. All these are conditions that are not pleasing to Allah When we are able to attack those conditions and rid ourselves of the bad character, then why Allah needs to then test with these issues, let's the rizq come back up because he doesn't need to get the attention of the servant because they're fine attending to themselves. But when they choose not to fix themselves then Allah wants their attention and the greatest way to get attention is to cut the rizq because if people don't care about anything else, what are you going to do to get people's attention? So everything, everything is, is important. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Taala. Sayyidi, if the meditation and muraqabah is the final stage and most advanced stage of this tariqah, what then are the beginning stages? Yeah, learning the way and following and uh, coming up uh, learning Islamic law, jurisprudence. You weren't allowed into tariqah until you understood Islamic law and took all your fiqh classes and learned everything about Islam and you would go to a different shaykh and which shaykh would give you bayat? Shaykh Dagestani wouldn't take students. So it wasn't like, you know, we'll go to 500 people in a room and say, okay, let's all recite the yeah, the bayat and <laughs> so that wasn't their style, they weren't interested in, in taking on students unless they were of a caliber which they had already trained and now they wanted to achieve the way of taste, the dhawq. But now the system is reversed because it's basically the bayat of intercession because many people will die and the earth is now collapsing. So this is an initiation for in- intercession for the azab al the difficulty of the grave, that the shaykhs will intervene in the grave to lighten the condition of what's happening in the graves. So that's the only reason they gave the permission because of the last days. So the last days because of the difficulty everybody's locking on to intercede, if they die from that COVID, from a sick, from this, from that. They took their bayat to have an intercession within the grave. Now which one of them will actually sit and try to achieve and to build themselves then that's a golden opportunity because of this connection there's a tremendous amount of energy. And because Islam would rise from the west then they actually want you not to know too much so that you can follow, learn and achieve realities. And as a result of learning and connecting you're building a taqwa and then Allah will begin to open up a teaching. So it's a completely different system happening because of the last days, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi you have said before that we should not expose our weakness to shaitan. 
Can you please no. clarify on that? Yeah, don't keep talking about what you don't like. He's listening too and he's sitting right next to you on a chair, I can't stand what I have to do like this. He's gonna make you do like that and he's gonna come after you only with that. So we've described many times, use common sense, imagine it's a fight and you're about to get into a boxing match and you keep telling the other side of the boxing match, my knee hurts, man my knee hurts and you walk around keep off, oh because you wanna make a show of your problems. That guy on the other side as soon as the boxing begins he's gonna kick you in the knee the whole time. So why did you give your weakness up? Why did you keep talking about your weakness? I can't stand when this like this, I can't stand like this, oh this is too big, heavy a test. People like to whine and complain and, and make all these noises but the one sitting next to me is shaitan, say, really? Well, I didn't even know that that bothers you and in five minutes he'll be punching right into that place. And the person's like, oh, I don't know why it just keeps getting worse or because you're sitting right next to you hearing all of your weakness. That's why the believer only has Allah to turn to, means in their salah, they're in their heart qafi, asking Allah grant me relief, this is difficult, this is sad, this is heavy for me. And Allah seals that conversation when they're making munajjad and du'a and Allah is closer to that in jugular vein. So the concept of complaining to people resolves nothing because you're not asking Allah anymore and, and you're just complaining to people to get the satisfaction and the, the sorrow of people, the drama of people. And what you actually did do is magnify the problem because shaitan is like, what? Yeah this person bothered me so much at work, you tell 20 people, shaitan's like, really? And then shaitan goes now to that person and hijacks them. And as soon as you enter the room and that person may be not a believer, shaitan fully can operate that person and just yell at you all day long, push you in the head, do everything possible because you, you gave the information to shaitan to do that. So isn't Allah protecting? He said, no because Allah told you don't complain. Means that if you want your case to be in Allah's resolution and Allah to, res to resolve then turn only to Allah That nobody can help me but my Lord. So between Allah and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad I turn my prayers and their munajjad, their du'as, then our Ya Rabbi take this difficulty away and resolve this issue. Awwadu amri in Allah, in Allahu basir wa bidifaad that you see my condition and that's it. And then shaitan shouldn't have like every game and every move about you. You should be wondering like where your punch is going to come next, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Does sleep deprivation make us susceptible to attacks from shaitan and easier to influence towards darkness? Not necessarily. That's an individual case. Some people don't need to sleep that much and they can sleep for a few hours and accomplish what's necessary to accomplish. Some people can overly sleep like a drug addict. Some of these kids they smoke so much that they sleep you know 20 hours. So it wouldn't be the deprivation of sleep, it's actually the, the action of sleep that shaitan is putting upon the person and making them to be like in a coma, not able to get up. So every, every case is unique and goes both ways. The one who sleeps too much shaitan is defecating upon them, they can't get up. The one whom too little maybe because they eat and drink and nervous and then they become delusional. But the one whom their ibadah and the worshipness is strong, the energy that comes to them can suffice with less sleep because they're on, running on a tremendous energy source. So advisable to at least get seven to eight hours of sleep on a normal scale inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam How do we know if our zikr is from the heart and not from the mind? How do you know if your zikr is from your heart or from your mind? 
the doesn't matter because the zikr doesn't come from the mind. You do your awrad and you do your zikr, you try to do it silently and in your heart, focus on your heart, keep learning how to do meditation and uh, it get more and more improved and you'll know the feeling. The feeling of connecting and how you're connected, you'll know that, it's not in your mind. When you make a mind connection, oh I, I, I feel the presence, the shaykh is in front of me and, and then become delusional. He's talking to me about the race horses, he gave me the lottery number, I'm asking you know which is my favourite car, Did, should he choose for me? The, those you know is in your mind, that's why you get the meditation book and you learn how to make the connection in which the connection is only about energy, that I need to, to reach the energy oceans, I need to feel the energy and then the energy begins to dress the servant, they become heated. That same servant as soon as they make their connection and start making their zikr, the zikrs are very heated, that's in their heart. But if their meditation is through their mind in which I see the shaykh is telling me, get this, I'm asking him to go on a vacation here, should I go here, should I do that, that's all through their mind or delusional sort of uh, and they're playing in their mind with their connection. That's not the connection, the connection is the shaykh is in front of me, I wouldn't waste that time on anything from dunya and I'm asking only that I be dressed from the light, that dress me from your light, dress me from the oceans of power and to breathe in that ocean of power and then make my zikr and, and make my connection and breathe. And you begin to feel more energy come, more energy come until you are lit and you feel like an immense fire inside of your heart. Any zikr you do you'll know that that's a zikr that's done with a fire with an, uh, an immense amount of energy inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa From the book of Insan-e Kamil, can you please expand a little bit more on the tree of certainty? Yeah, the tree of certainty in our internal journey is that who knows himself will know his Lord that the journey inside opens the journey outside towards the reality of heavens. Allah gave us a tree of certainty which is our lungs. So opening the power of the lungs is the reality of opening the power of the breath. Sidratul Muntaha means is the reality of the tree, the bronchial tree. So Allah gave us all the realities of paradise within ourself. So you're, you're able to meditate again, first the basis is to connect with the shaykh, you have a strong connection with the shaykh and that you focus inward and focus on the reality of your tree that every breath that comes in, it comes with a Divine power and that you're expelling every negativity. And that every breath that coming in you want that blood to be stamped with zikr so that you eat and drink pure and that you begin to make your zikr with your breath. So all of that is in the meditation book on how to do the meditation, how to make the connection. Once you've read the meditation book and you're solid with the connection then the insana kamil is a gateway to understanding the reality of Prophet and that we have those realities within us that have to be unlocked. How to open the lungs, how to open the breath, how to open the power of the breath and then you understand everything now is based on breathing. So that's why the shaykhs that when they know that then anyone who says they smoke the shaykh knows immediately they never, re they never reached anything to do with the breath. Because we've seen shaykhs in other countries walking around with cigarettes. They say, no that's not a shaykh, he has a cigarette up, of course he's not a shaykh, he doesn't know anything. If he doesn't know that his breath is based on the Divine mercy of Allah it means he has unlocked his breath. If he lost his breath he lost himself. Anything else he thinks he knows is, is for his own entertainment and whoever else cares to listen. But it's an entertainment fact, it never reached a reality. So everything the shaykhs reach as a result of what they reach, they understood how important it is. Our path is based on the breath. Every one of the golden chain shaykhs 
has a, a section about breathing and the importance of breathing and that the path is based on breathing and the breath. Why? Because it's nafas al rahmah it's the reality of power. If you don't have the breath you don't have the power. If you don't have the power then you didn't understand the breath. So then based on that you were able to understand, oh this person do like this, this person do like this, okay they, of course they didn't lock, unlock their breath, inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Thank you for reminding us to not talk about our weaknesses and since shaitan can read my mind so can we say stop our negative thinking in the bud also? Stop your what? Stop your… stop our negative thinking. Yeah you have to. That's, that's the whole process of uh, fighting bad desires and bad thoughts is how to stop the negative thinking by making your salawats. Keep making your connection, keep asking for more energy to come so it means that your connection is still weak. You have to make a strong connection otherwise why is thinking negative? Shaitan is just sitting like on your ear talking, well, why, why is he that close? Something's wrong. So your connection has to be strong, you have to keep making the connection and that, that's the whole way. If shaitan is, is too close and talking all the time then definitely is a big problem. <clears throat> the waswas is the problem and, and uh, holding that thought is very important because you enter into the presence of the shaykhs you have to have a good thought because your complaining is being casted onto him, he can understand your complaining. Your bad thoughts and bad desires in their presence then is, is being understood. So shaitan is going to attack you heavily at that time. So those have to be continuously accomplished and achieved to fight those and that's through the muraqabah. So you have to keep the presence of the shaykh at all times. So that the shaykh is with me and say, you fill me with your light and shaitana is coming too close to me and that I'm nothing and you fill me with your light, fill me with your light. And that's a process that they have to achieve and only with the light and the shaykhs and the shaykhs and they're filled with that light and shaitan doesn't approach near them, inshaAllah. So they have to achieve that light. If they don't have that muraqabah well, of shaitan come through them and how shaitan when he saw Adam's body he entered like this and hit the clay and said, this can… and he went and ting, make a ting noise, said this very easy creation to attack. And that's basically what he's doing, he's moving throughout people and just you know playing with them like a cat and a mouse, he's the cat and he just plays with them. Only through the muraqabah to bring an energy stronger than your energy, the, the bringing the energies of the shaykh from his shaykh, his shaykh and bringing these energies, you become lit up as a result of that energy. The shaitans find very difficult to approach towards that light and they get burned by it. And if you're strong with the muraqabah it's not you, it's that as soon as your, your shaykhs are inhabiting your, your area, your light, they're all around you. So as soon as shaitan comes the shaykh goes after them. So they then become very cautious of entering into that space because who's going to come after them? So if when you have a love for Imam Ali salam, Imam al Husayn as salam as we have a love for them and immense love for them, you are with whom you love. When the hadith that we taught before the Prophet described, you be with whom you love but you can read that. The other way too that whom you love will be with you because you love them. So by good deeds, good actions, putting this faith into action, well, Imam Ali is with you. You wear his name on everything, you love him, you're making all your salawats and praising upon Sayyidina Muhammad So then what happens? They're with you. And that's why the, the nasheed that you're reading is that even if you have a thousand skins and think you're going to be protected you're going to burn. But if Imam Ali is with you and you have one skin nothing can reach you. 
Why? Because imagine that mama is just standing right next to you and shaitan is trying to come close to you. He's not, he's, they're scared to death of Imam Ali But when you have no Imam with you, he's not scared to death of you. He come and ding like a tin clay. <laughs> That's the whole concept of the tafakkur and the concept of being of service, the concept of, of putting the, this emblem upon you, putting your ta'weez upon you is you walk with this love and you they're there with you and you are with them and with the shaykhs. So this is a, a way of companionship. If anyone tried to come after the companions who, who, who was going to deal with them? Prophet would destroy anything that came near his holy companions. Why? Because this is called companionship. And if anyone tried to come near Prophet the companions would destroy them. They surrounded Prophet at all times. So this is called the reality of companionship. But if you walk alone as a lone wolf, uh, shaitan is all over you. Because you don't have the power to do that, you don't have the power to, to block that. So this is the whole way of companionship. Our tariqah is based on association and the best of companionships. It's a sobat al khairu fi jamiya. Yeah, best of companionship and we've described before it's not the companionship of three people sitting in a circle, it's the companionship of the heavenly ones that you keep their company. Through your actions and through your deeds and you make your whole life to, to breathe in their energy, to be in their energy, they're all around protecting. Let them do the work of casting out these shaitans and attacking them but you have to bring them into your life, keep them all around inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa when we put the taweez on the windows, should it be facing outward? And also someone else also asked about where to place the taweezes on the car. Yeah, under your rear view and on all the corners of the windows, in the bottom corner so it's out of view of the car. And the stickers are made to be back entry so that they face you, not on the street, otherwise the stick would be from the outside facing the street and people peel them off. So facing you is, is sufficient. Remember we described in other talks of the ta'weez, it's a light that's produced. You don't even have to see it. It's a light that emanates from that reality because it's coming from paradise, coming from the heavens, the sijil, it's like a flag that Prophet gave to his tariqahs that carry these banners and these are armies and, and battalions in the heavens. And as they move with these sijils and with these banners then the lights are seen by the unseen and they sense these are dangerous lights to be near. Now do you have to have that to see it? No, not necessary. Just place them in the car to defend the car against ricochet oppression, means that if oppression and zulumat was coming towards you directly that's an immense protection or a ricochet zulumat. And with shaitan says, I can't take him out but I'll let the guy in the car next to him fall asleep and as a result his car will swerve into him and through a ricochet for you to be hit. So shaitan is aggressively after the people of light. So as a result we're not heedless, put your taweez, put the sticker of the taweez in the car, put the sticker of the taweez on your windows, homes in the rooms of the children, rooms of yourselves and make your house like it's carrying the banners of that sijil, like a banners of war that you would put them all over your property. And Prophet said, fight to your death to control your property. So when they had caravans of wealth that they were traveling with, Prophet told them, it's a sunnah and wajib that you defend your property. 
We're not a people who give our property to shaitans and say, oh here you can take it. No, you're going to fight to the death to defend it. So as a result, same in your lives that don't let things to be unattended, defend them, put your taweezes upon them, put the taweez upon the children. All of these are, are deep realities. People like it, they don't like it, well they don't have to deal with the calamity. So if you're a person who only goes by why people said, well when you have a calamity those same people will come and say, oh this stuff was so horrible this happened to you. So what, <laughs> what are they gonna do now? Nothing. So best that you live to your faith because you're the one who has to live with the consequences. We used to have when the children were small they say, oh we want to take the kids to the library on a, on a school expedition. Will you allow? And I said, absolutely not. He said, but why if anything happens? I say, if you lose my kid and God forbid something happens to him, you're going to come back and say, sorry, do I take your life at that time or, or your uh, so sorry is going to be sufficient for me? What's sorry going to do for me? So my responsibility is defend my children. I said, no you're not taking them anywhere unless we attend and see what you're doing. So the same concept that some, somebody telling you, don't put these taweezes and in the event if something happens they say, I'm sorry, what did I know, why did you listen to me? So because we know the immense amount of difficulty, defend yourself and your properties. So the greatest defense and spiritual defense is to make sure that these things are protected, the children are protected, the property is protected, that which you own is protected inshaAllah. InshaAllah Subhanahu wa bika Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasifoon wa Salaamun al Mursaleen Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ila Sharif al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wa sallam ali sahabi kiram Ulum al Shaykhina fi tariqatan ashbandiyat al Aliyya wa Sayyidu wa Sadatina wa Siddiqeen al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.